Alright, Sasquatch Chronicles. I am up early this morning and I am going <clears> to <throat> take you guys where I had my experiences. I don't have anybody to hold the camera, but that's I'm going to do it. I'm going to get it done. So let's take a quick ride. It'll be about 20 minutes because there's two places up here that it happened. So I got to show you both of them, kind of explain it real quick. So let's take a quick ride. Okay guys, Sasquatch Chronicles, my friends, uh, this is Tunnel Reservoir, this is where I was at in 1989 when we were playing the music on the dam, hopefully uh, you guys can see it really well, kind of get an idea of what we used to do, we used to step down here off of this railing and we'd, uh, we would lean our backs up against this wall you know and uh, this is where we would hang out right here up against this wall you know we would put the radio up up right here right up on this ledge and uh, you know we put the beer up here we'd sit up against this wall right here and we'd sit up and hang out on this beautiful lake and uh, you know, just hang out with the people that we've met years past, and uh, you know, we would meet usually meet the same people every year. Same campers would come up, so it was really special. A lot of people had a lot of uh, a lot of conversations out here on this dam. You know, a lot of people met people and and developed a lot of friendships out here um, here and in, at the camp anyways that night we played that music we uh, we heard something come from basically up river but it was coming out this way it, it come down it must it sound like it was a mile away that and you know to my left here and we didn't know what the hell it was so you know Within about a minute or two, we heard basically another scream, and it was starting to starting to come up this spillway, 
this spillway leads down into the Pitt River Canyon and this thing starts coming up this spillway towards us. I mean, it's it's on the move and needless to say, we got out of there. Excuse my language. We got the, the F out of there. And uh, yeah, we didn't try to tell the parents about it. We weren't supposed to be up there the, the night before. We weren't supposed to ever be sneaking out and coming out onto this dam. But uh, anyways, I'll take you to the second spot. But here's the spillway that the creature started coming up along the side here in the forest uh, you know along the, in between the, the wall there and the, and the timber and it was working its way up towards us so <laughs> we got the heck out of there you know this is beautiful tunnel reservoir and uh this is where i had my first encounter in 1989 now i'm going to take you down by the hot springs and uh show you where i had to walk as we had to, I had to walk actually up this road farther, so we'll go back on it and I'll give you an idea of what happened here. Okay guys, this is the power line right away. And as you can see, there's plenty of berry patches out here. Lots of berry patches. And uh, this is the spot that I stood under. See a nice, uh, you can see a nice eagle nest up there in that one power line. Anyway, this is where I had my second encounter. I mean, it was a little bit farther, uh, a little bit farther down the road from here, but this is where that creature stopped and this is where I contemplated going up to this red house that's coming up right here. The only thing is I was coming from the different direction so after I show you the house that I was going to go and see to save me right here. Uh, 
Uh, anyway, so I'm gonna go right from where I had to start walking and give you the encounter in its entirety. I have to show you exactly how far I had to walk. And it sucked. But yeah, I'll show you the encounter, but we'll start from the beginning. So the PG&E campers, we would dump our uh, inner tubes in the river at the pig, the, the pit stop bridge, which is coming up right here. And uh, so basically that night we pulled our cars in over here by my friend's uh, my friend's property on Nelson Creek Road we pulled uh, we pulled in over here we parked down in there there's a little bit of a parking area down in here and uh, we took our inner tubes and this is about 10 o'clock at night we took our inner tubes and we threw them in the river. We floated down probably about a half a mile to the spot where we go, quarter mile, I don't know, however long it is, but I'll take you from the beginning where we started. Down this road, down the uh, Hot Springs Road. Down the hot, down the old uh, Hot Springs Road, that's where we were. Here we go, on to the main road here, Big Bend Road, from Hot Springs Road. So I had to walk from Hot Springs Road to Big Bend Road, this is the main road. And uh, so I'll, I'll hightail it so this video is not so long. But uh, yeah, imagine where I had to walk through. Now. When I turn on the Big Bend Road, it used to be gravel. Now it's paved, most of it. And then it goes to gravel again to where, where I was camped. So that night, I turn on to Hagen Flat, turned into Pitt River Canyon here that night in 1992. And I'm walking, you know, trying to f make good time to get back to my camp and uh, so I'm walking 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 and some ways into this walk I'll tell you right about where I started hearing the noise and like I said I only had a big lighter it's right about I think it was right about here in the bend now there's a lot of new houses here there's a lot of people that have moved in since 1992 but uh, it was right about somewhere right about here right about here that I had something start walking next to me and start breaking branches I mean this was freaking terrifying it was right off to the to my right you know, they've done a lot of brush clearance. It was a lot thicker in here back in the day. But, uh, you know, as I walked, this thing walked. And as I, you know, stopped, this thing stopped on a dime. And, you know, to me that was terrifying because it was on two feet. And it weighed as much as a horse or a cow. It had to have been at least five to seven hundred pounds it was massive and uh, I've never had anything like that happen in my life so needless to say as I'm walking I start you know I start praying you know I start praying to God because I don't have a gun or a knife I got a, I, I got a big lighter and that's all I have to as my saving grace that and God you know and at that point in my life I felt like maybe I was heading towards being an atheist because of my parents divorce and my uh, recent breakup or whatever I mean it was just you know as a young man around 17 you 
Yeah, you're looking for you're looking for uh, you're looking for something in life. You're looking for some kind of I don't know. You're just looking for something to click in and, and go. Yes, this makes sense. You know, when you've been through a whole lot of stuff. You know. Anyways, uh, and I kept walking. All right, for my friends at Sasquatch Chronicles, I don't know when the tape tape uh, uh, stopped rolling, but this is where I ended up uh, having my uh, second encounter. I was followed up this road, and that animal had stopped probably. I was followed up this road for about, I don't know, probably about a quarter of a mile, and... Uh, it stopped, that animal stopped right there. Uh, basically, it, you know, I didn't have a gun or a knife, so I was just praying to God, you know, just make it stop. I'll quit being an asshole uh, to people, I'll quit smoking cigarettes, I'll try to go back to church. And finally, that thing stopped over there. There's a Texaco truck that, that it stopped right about that spot. And, uh, and I walked out here, I contemplated, there's a, a little house out there uh, a little red house and I contemplated uh, asking them for help. I actually went up and, and talked to them. I finally met the people that, that live there and told them about my night. I just wanted to know what would have happened if I would have asked for help and those two old ladies they were really nice and uh, you know um, who knows how it would have went though but as you can see there is a lot of berry briars out here in this right away this uh, power line clearing and uh, it just goes up. These power lines go for days. I call them Bigfoot bowling alleys. Anyways, um, down there, uh, down on that side, down in that dip is the Pitt River. So, uh, you know, I stopped out here and I prayed. I was like, get me out of here, Lord. Just get me out of here. And thank God, a concrete truck, one of the ones with the firefighters and, you know, the, the inmates, uh, came blaring down the road and they lit up the road so I took that opportunity to get the hell out the road you know I, I started running I got up that way but I just gotta show you the rest of the ride that I the rest of the walk you know I've already covered about maybe two miles um, from that direction uh, to this point and from here I got a ways to go and that part that I got ahead of me it gets really dark so I'm gonna take you to it. I'm gonna take you to where my campsite was that night that I had to walk to. And it gets really dark up here in this campsite, you know, I mean, where I had to go camp, where I had to walk, I had to walk through all this, you know, and it was, this wasn't paved back then, it was a dirt road, and uh, it's really dark in here, but it gets even darker once you pass the PG&E camps. And here's the PG&E camps. This is what our PG&E camp looks like right here. Yeah. I've got a ways to go to get to my to the place where I was camped, the place I had to walk. Out here in this clearing, I felt kind of safe because I could kind of see in the moonlight, but it was this part that I feared right here coming up because I still had to walk past the place where we heard the screams in 1989 and I had a quite of a bit of a walk down when the pavement ends. I mean, uh, this was all dirt road. None of this was paved. This is paved this year or last year. I don't know, but brand new. So. Now, we're back at the Tunnel Reservoir, we're back at the spillway area. I had to walk even farther past this, so 
I started back in town, you know, at the hot springs, walked all the way here, and still had to go all the way down towards where the first dam is to where where my camp was. So I'm gonna show you where my camp was down this road. And uh, you could tell me what you think, whether I had a hell of a walk, you know? I mean, I had a long walk that day. Yeah, I wasn't happy walking down here. I mean, I could just repeat that one over and over. It was uh, the worst. Yeah, it's real dark in here at night. I should take a nighttime video just to show people just how dark it gets here in, in, at nighttime. Uh, it is black inside this chasm. I mean, it's uh, it's pitch black in here at night. If you don't have a light, you're screwed. <laughs> yeah. Thank God I had that little big lighter though, because I wouldn't have made it this far. I'll tell you that much. That little big lighter is pretty much what kept me on the road that night. Boy, oh boy, oh boy, I tell ya. I tell ya, I tell ya. You know what's funny is, is up here, the crazy thing is, they got a, they got a place up here. I always thought it was ironic because I had my experiences here. I always thought it was ironic that they have a place called Henderson. And it's a very, uh, only the very rich of the rich people get to fish here because it's $500 a day. And you got to release the damn things. That's not my type of fishing. But for those people who who are too uh, soft shell to get down the pit river and catch their own fish the hard way the way me and my mother do it well they still got this place if they can afford it anyways I'm sure the people are really nice in there and and uh it's just it's an arm and a leg to go fish for anyways back on the, the rest of the journey here Yeah, I always thought that was weird that they had a place called Henderson right here where I had my Sasquatch encounters, you know, I mean, it, you put the two together and you got Harry and the Hendersons. It cracks me up, excuse my language, but uh, yeah, I've been hanging around the man camp for the last week, so my vocabulary's gone downhill as far as my, uh, uh, my vulgar language. I'm really trying to keep a cap on that. I apologize to anybody who has children listening. I'll try to have my wife edit it out if, if all possible. Um, so, right about down here is where uh, my camp was, a little bit farther down the road. Basically, up this road was my camp. You know, and uh, well, I'll go up and show you where my camp was. They've changed it around in here too. There's been a lot of development up here. They, none of these signs were here. This was all four by four road, and I'm, I'm, you know, I'm able to take my my passenger vehicle on it and uh, my sedan. But uh, yeah, we used to camp right about in in in. Uh, in this area it's almost hard to recognize the way they've changed it around but um, I'll just go down and flip a Yui down here Yee 
Yeehaw. Are we having fun yet? Sasquatch Chronicles, yes, I had to walk all this way. I had to walk all this way in the middle of the night. Let me tell you, in the middle of the night, coming down in a place like this with just a big lighter, no gun, no knife, it ain't nice. It cracks me up because now they got a toilet down here. We used to have to, well, excuse my language again, we used to have to go to the bathroom in a bucket. And, uh, but this is where we used to camp. This was our, this was our camp spot. Out here, right, right next to a river. This was our camping area. Now it's uh, now anybody can come down here. I mean, we used to have to fight to get down here. It was uh, it was kind of hard to get get down here. But uh, nowadays we uh, yeah, yeah, we camp as you know we're we're not as young as we used to be so. We camp down at the cabins like a bunch of soft shells and uh, my back's bad so I can't really get out here and rough it like I used to. So that's about it. We're going to head back, head back to the house. I got to go have some uh, lunch brunch and then we're gonna go do some more fishing if I can get out of here <laughs> anyways guys I really thank you for taking the time to watch this video give you a better idea of where I was at what I had to deal with and uh, once again it's Christopher C uh, with base team Bear Area Sasquatch Explorers team and uh, my buddies this is for you over at Sasquatch Chronicles thank you guys 